final box that I'm going to cover off today, which completes our nine boxes, is unfortunately the money that flies out the door. You know, whether you're value driven from your choices of boxes, you're 100% value driven. This is a high end product and it, and it is all about value, which will afford you to get the best of the best and, and demonstrate they're using the best of the best. If you're at the other flip side of that and it's a cost driven business model, then hey, you've got to, you know, you've got to be a lean enterprise. You've got to try and find ways that you haven't got massive amounts of overhead. And it is worth bearing in mind that for, for those of you that intend to have a business model in 20 years from now or have a legacy that you're going to pass on to somebody that is very labor intensive, you know that we've reached the point of peak population. In actual fact, we've got population decline in the Western world, and it's actually not going to get any easier finding people. In fact, it's just going to carry on getting harder because the existing population aren't replacing itself. They're just getting older, which again lends itself to looking at your key activities and your key resources and just trying to develop a competitive but lean operation if you can. And again, back to that point I was making, we've hit peak population. We're in aging population in the West. In fact, the only country right now or the only area of the world right now that hasn't already hit peak population is sub-Saharan Africa. Everywhere else in the world, China, India, Europe, the whole of the Americas, the whole of Australasia have actually hit peak population and now all of their populations are aging. So they're not replacing um, people. So there's no growing. So this thing about like, you know, population explosion and there's too many people on the planet, you won't have to worry about in our future because in actual fact, there's going to be less people. So bear that in mind with your legacy, you know, what you're leaving onto the world. And if you rely on lots of resources, then it's going to be a, a continual problem for you. You've got your fixed and you've got your variable costs and they but they need to play themselves out in populating this blue box down in the bottom corner. Is that where are the big costs? You don't need to when you're talking to a business partner or cementing it in your own mind. You don't need to go through your management of accounts, looking code by code, all you through all your nominal codes to see how much they're going to increase. What you really want to do is just talk about the big ones. You know, which are the big ones that are going to change? Which what? Where are the new costs that are going to come into the business with this new opportunity that I'm creating? And I do bang on a lot about cash flow. Everybody should have a cash flow, and whether it's on an accounts package or whether it's on an Excel spreadsheet, it's the best tool for managing day to day uh, running of a business. So you know where you are and where you think you're going to be going. So building a budget and then tracking planned versus actuals, just so that you know what the future holds, because how can you invest if you don't really know what's around the corner? And, you know, and that's the cost element to it. But also the cash flow forecast is a tremendous tool to sharpen the resolve of people who are in sales in your organization responsible for sales, because you can set targets and you can build out scenarios and say, well, OK, for us to be able to do this, this is your operational costs. We need to increase sales. So then suddenly you can start introducing targets and expectations on new business that's being acquired. And all of that's driven by a really simple sheet. So if you're not using cash flow forecasts, please do. So that's the overall business model canvas. You've got a certain type of customer, you've got products, and you need to be able to describe the characteristics that resonate with that customer base. This is to create long-term relationships, and you do all of that through your five phases of your channel strategy and get that right, and it doesn't need to be complicated. In fact, the opposite is the case. You're going to have to do some stuff now, and, and or other people are going to have to help you, and it will may well require utilizing new resources that you're not already using or untapping potential within existing resource bases or finding new partnership models to be able to deliver it. It will bring new revenue streams in. There may be some new exotic um, accountancy practice required in the future with CBDCs and NFTs and having money tied up in fine art as investments and all that kind of good stuff. But all of them things are coming and there will be costs going out of the business. If you get it right, You'll have a desirable business model that people want. You'll have a feasible business that you can actually run and your accountant will love you because actually it's a viable ongoing concern. And when you're ready to exit and sell this business, you've got a good trading history, a competitive advantage over the opposition, and you've got a good stable operational base for somebody to inherit and do even more with.